Hello again, this is Joe Roberts running another tutorial on Tagit Pack. It's been a few days since my last video, uh, sorry about that. First, I moved into a new apartment at university and I didn't have a lot of time. And second, my friend took down his Minecraft server that I was running everything on. So I've kind of been recreating everything from scratch. Uh, note that I am running basically the same bug that I was using before, uh, infinite resources. Kind of this is one application of it, kind of cool. Um, basically every single chest has a different resource in it that I can use to do pretty much anything that I want. So uh, yeah, it's it's a more convenient way than using transmutation circles and stuff like that. It's it's kind of nice to run with. But the problem with this thing is that you know even if you have iron here, even if you have sticky resin here, uh, you can't, don't have refined iron and you don't have rubber, which is extremely important if you're making higher end machines, uh, you know, solar panels, uh, MFSUs, things like that. Uh, big problem if you don't have those resources, because then you'd have to do everything by hand. Uh, this specific video is going to apply creating a machine that will basically do all that for you. What we're going to do is we're going to create a machine that will take everything in this chest over here, refine it into all the forms that we want, and drop it off in another chest further down the line. Uh, as you might expect, this does use red power machines to move things around, specifically a sorting machine to send things off in the first place, and then a retriever to retrieve them at the other end. Uh, we're going to... Oh dear. Excuse me. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put down six machines. Well, first that's the retriever, but then six machines. First, two centrifuge extractors, second two induction furnaces, then a rotary macerator and a singularity compressor. So, two induction furnaces... Or, sorry, whatever. You get the deal. And so then we have those six machines right here. So, what we're going to do is we are going to take this sorting machine over here, and we are going to connect it to all of these machines. Now note, I'm using red power, t red uh, redstone tubes over on this end, uh, because I want to be able to deliver power, uh, a redstone signal, off to the other end of the sorting machine. Uh, this is, you didn't, I'm not sure you need to use red power tubes here, it's not all that important. Uh, note that this is connecting kind of awkwardly, so actually with a sorting machine it doesn't make a big difference because it'll only connect one way, but there we go, right like that. Uh, the problem with all of these tubes, again they're all connected to each other, we need to make sure everything's going to the right place, so what do we do? We use power, or we use colors, sorry. So, in this case, different colors go to different types of machines. Note that the two induction furnaces and the two centrifuge extractors have the same color, that's because we want everything in those going to the same place. A uh, simple enough setup. The biggest disadvantage of using sorting machines and retrievers is that they do require power, um, specifically like uh, bluetricity. So we need these batteries, we need solar panels. Note I won't actually be able to show the machine off fully until these charge, so I'll just leave them at that for now. Oh, and um, if this is like this, then everything's going to go into the battery, so you have to connect it with covers. Covers can be used on, on pneumatic tubes perfectly fine, kind of nice if you want to hide your machinery, like if I wanted to do this, um, people would no longer be able to see what's going through these tubes, I'd have a perfectly flat space to work on things like that. And so remember these machines have to be delivered items from the top, but then they can be retrieved from the side. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to open this up and then we're going to put more pneumatic tubes over here, taking things away from the machines. And then over here, send that this direction, and then over here sorting machine uh, pointing with that yellow end down. The yellow end is the direction that it's going to be taking stuff from. And then a crystal chest over here. And... oh dear. Like that. And boom! Problem solved. Now you have this machine. Um, the In order to get this thing to run though, you know, you know, there's more to it than just that. All of these machines over here, the centrifuge extractors, they're all taking low voltage, so you need to put transformer upgrades into all the machines. Note that the induction furnaces already take medium voltage, so unless you're running those off an MFSU, you don't need to do anything with them. So, transformer upgrades into all the machines. These are now ready to receive power. Uh, this guy over here, or 
here, sorry. Uh, you need to deliver power or redstone to the sorting machine so that it takes the same pulse. And then I'm going to send this over here and give me a sec to work through all this stuff. here is where you're going to place your timer. So get my timer there. In order to connect a timer to jacketed wire like this you need actually a um, redstone like that. So you need both red alloy wire and jacketed wire. And now if you notice it's delivering a pulse there. All the machines are cycling perfectly fine. Get more power to this guy. You know, I love my Swift Wolf. My Swift Wolf is the best thing ever. And since those all have transformer upgrades in them now, we can deliver them power. So we go over here. Get wire to all of them. And then connect it to my power network over here. There we go. These machines are now powered. Uh, note that, yeah, see, they're powering up nicely. Uh, note that since this is a machine that's not going to be running all the time, we do want these machines running all the time because they do need to spin up to reach their maximum speed. And once they're at their maximum speed, they're not consuming a lot of power. So do that. You're turning them all on. They are permanently on. So now this machine is completely functional. It's that simple. Uh, we still need to wait for these damn things to charge. That's a big problem, I think. But, um, works perfectly fine from here. So, the thing now is that we need to tell this sorting machine what to send to what color. So, note that gray is our centrifuge extractor. Um, for that, our primary thing is going to be sticky. So, we're going to tell it to take sticky. So, gray. Let me just find gray here. Gray. And so then, that. Now the sorting machine will only take full stacks of sticky resin. Uh, but the problem is what happens if you put in something that isn't a full stack? So instead what you do is that you put in the specific quantities that it's allowed to take in the priority that it's supposed to take them. So it'll take 64 priority ties first, then 32, then 16, and if you have a weird odd number it'll just count it down one by one. Uh, next, iron, because our induction furnace is mostly going to be taking iron so so our induction furnace we want it to take iron and that's blue so blue oh, sorry so blue like that we want to give it basically the same treatment it is now going to take 64, prioritized over 32, prioritized over 16, prioritized over 1. Uh, we can do the same thing for the rotary macerator taking coal and the singularity compressor taking advanced alloy and things like that. Uh, I'll leave that up to you. Basically, now what we need to do is we need to get make it sure that it knows that it's just going to take whatever the heck it wants. So this is the mode that you want to use right now. Then it's just going to grab whatever it wants to grab from here. And then once these things are fully powered, then the sorting machine is just going to start picking stuff up and sending it off to the various machines. And then the retriever, since that's also getting a signal, is going to be taking everything out of these machines through this pipe right here and dropping it off into this output chest over here. I'm going to see if I can manipulate the video to uh, get a time lapse for all these things to charge. And we're back. And as you can see, the machine is happily chugging away, delivering sticky off to this machine here. And then the retriever is pulling everything out and tossing it into this chest. Simple way of doing things, you have suddenly just automated all of your sticky and your iron production. Now you have basically as much refined iron and as much sticky as you want. 
Um, the big problem with this machine, if you notice, that it's going to pick things out as soon as they come in. And since it's picking out things one at a time, then, I mean, this machine gets totally backed up, and then this machine is basically empty. So, what you do is you go over to the sorting machine and you actually put in specific quantities that you want it to take out. In this case, we go over here and you tell the sorting machine you only want to take iron out in quantities of 32. So, now it's just going to grab iron in quantities of 32. You notice there's not 32 in this machine, so it grabbed 32 from this machine. You can put in as much iron as you want, it's going to pull it out from all of them at the same time. I'd recommend doing something similar with the, the sticky, because the problem with this setup right here is I've just told it to only take out iron in quantities of 32. So my rubber's totally backed up and not going anywhere. So I'll just go over to this guy, tell it, here you go, take out rubber one stack at a time. And now, it's going to just grab the rubber, stack by stack, and bring it on out. Oh, yes, my mistake here. Uh, since you told it to pick two things out, it's picking them out in a specific order. It'll go that, and then that, and then since there's no more refined in the machine, it won't take the rubber. So, set it to mix mode, and then it'll just grab it whenever there's a chance. Uh, note that rubber is actually made in quantities of three at a time, so I don't recommend using 64, use like 63 instead, that's a much better choice. Anyways, that concludes this video on the basic machine, I'll see you in the next one.